Microphone check, are we there? Bubble balancing an automotive passenger or light truck tire. That's what this video is about. Well, this particular tire that I mounted in my last video, I had to put it back into service, so I just did not get a chance to film it. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna balance this 31 inch tire to come off my SUV. And I'm just gonna take you through my process of doing it. Not everybody's going to agree, but you just have to understand it's my opinion is how I do it and hopefully the information will help you out. So with that, let's get right to it. So before you do any balancing, always make sure that the tire is at operating pressure. And if you're balancing a used tire like I am, go through and pick out all the stones that may have got caught up in the tread area. And then remove all of the wheel weights. And make sure to keep them too. The stick on wheel weights, all you have to do is clean them up, add a new adhesive backing and then they're ready to be reused and clean the inside of the wheel as well as the balancer cone contact area. Once all that's done, it's time for the balancer. So the idea here is to set the wheel flush against this flange right here and then slowly let it drop and let the cone center the wheel. So enough of the chit chat, let's do it. Come here, boy. So once it's on there, give the tire a nudge in a few places and pay attention to where that bubble settles at. In this case, it's right in the middle of goo. <laughs> goo. Go. It's right in the middle of go. Now we need to verify that, but with the weight of the wheel and tire on the balancer, you do not want to spin it or you will ruin the balancing pin. So what we're going to have to do is pick it up and move it around. And again, nudge it. And it is verified right in the middle of go. So now we know where our light spot is. For weights, you have your choice of either the clip on type or the stick on type. Now I prefer the stick on type for these alloy wheels. And because of the way that I'm gonna be mounting them on the back inside of the wheel, I'm gonna be placing them right here on the edge since it's pretty much in the same plane. Now, if I was going to be using clip-on weights, of course, I would put them right there where you'd expect, you know, right where they're going to be installed at. All right, so as you probably expect, and it is a standard method, you just add weights to the light side of the wheel until the bubble is centered. Let's see how many it's going to take this time. I'm going to nudge that a little bit and see where it settles out. All right, I'm going to put a little bit more in there. And go with uh, four ounces. That looks closer. Okay, so four ounces looks good. But because there's eight of them, I'm going to rearrange this a little bit closer to the way that I'm going to be melting it on the wheel. Just see that the uh, weight distribution is the same. All right, I'm going to go with that. So four ounces. All right, mark our tire. Now, if you were gonna use clip-on weights, what you would do is find your mark and attach a weight here and directly cross from it on the other side. Now, because the total was four ounces, each clip-on weight would be two ounces. But since we're using stick-on weights, we have a little bit more work to do. So the first thing we gotta do is transfer our mark to the inside of the wheel. Now how I do that is I find the mark and aim it straight down. Put it on these, uh, between these angle irons and my tire changer here. Make sure it's facing straight down. And then just mark the rim at the bottom. Now with two clip-on weights, the weight is evenly distributed. But for the stick-on weights to have the same effect, we have to find the exact center of the tire and transfer that to the wheel. And all that involves is measuring the full width of the tire 
dividing it by two and leaving our mark. And then back to the rack for the weights to be installed. So with the circumferential center line of the wheel and tire and the crosshair, use it as a guide to perfectly center the wheel weight mass. If the mass is off center, then unless you're very lucky, a dynamic imbalance will be created or increased if it already has some. We don't want that. Once the wheel weights are on, it's time to double check the static balance. Look at that. Right dead perfect. The most important thing that I can tell you about bubble balancing, from my experience, is to evenly distribute the weight. If you're using clip-on weights, put the same amount of weight on both sides of the wheel. If you're using stick-on weights, dead center the weight mass. If you take your time and double check yourself, you will be happily surprised at the results you get. Keep in mind though, that bubble balancing only helps you to correct a static imbalance. That is, that the weight is evenly distributed around the axis of rotation. A tire can be statically balanced perfectly and still have a dynamic imbalance. If you know that you've done a bubble balance correctly and you put the tire on your car and you feel a vibration, then the tire does have a dynamic imbalance and will have to be spin balanced. But done correctly, you will be surprised at how many tires only need to be statically corrected. Now there is actually another bubble balancing method that I really did want to get into in this video, but I just did not have the time or the extra weights to show the detail that I would have liked. It is a patented four weight bubble balancing method that used to be pretty popular in times past. I was able to find the patent and because I was not able to go into detail about it, there is a link in the description to the patent. And if you are interested in bubble balancing, you have to read this. This is a great read. So have at it and happy balancing. Dang, that sounded so corny. <laughs> that wasn't stupid, was it? <laughs> Come here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Why did my face swear the hell up? What the hell is that?